And now I'm going to turn to um, Excellency Ambassador uh, Povey. I want to share that I read that you are the first female permanent representative of Ghana in the UN. Am I right? You're right. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. So, Ambassador, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Sonia. And my sisters and uh, the brothers we have in our midst, it gives me great pleasure to, to be here with you. And I want to thank the Permanent Mission of Peru and the Women's International Forum for organizing this discussion on women in mining. It's not quite usual that we discuss mining issues here in New York, and so I find it very refreshing and linking it to, to women. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a very, very positive development. She's a very firm timekeeper, so I'm going to try <laughs> to say as much as I can, and hopefully during the Q&A session, I would have the opportunity to explain a little more detail if necessary. But yes, it's true. Um, women in mining is an important subject. Undoubtedly, mining remains one of the key revenue streams for many countries, including Ghana. And incidentally, Ghana is the second, not the first, second largest, we come after South Africa, second largest uh, gold producer and exporter. And we've been mining gold in our country for centuries. In fact, the British colonized us on the basis of of gold, the, the how much gold they found, and next, I guess, slaves. But the history, not so positive, um, was that um, it was, we were called the Gold Coast, if you compare to Ivory Coast, Gold Coast. And it was because of just the quantity of gold they found on our shores. And my grandmother tells me she used to pick uh, alluvial gold up after the rains. And so it is something that was you know an ongoing activity in the country but then of course the commercial value of gold changed all the dynamics of it with industrialization in miners mining companies coming in and then the dynamics of how that reflects on women because where sometimes you find women are able to you know they do these things but the moment monetary value is placed on the item the men take over and we are relegated and so it's a similar uh, story with Ghana um between uh, 1493 and 1600, uh, Ghana accounted for 36% of all the gold produced in the world at that time. So this uh, goes to show such an, it's an important industry in my country. Now, I think that the conversation we're having today is very important because it fits very well into the sustainable development issue. Um, while the mining sector has the potential to transform societies and communities, it isn't getting there simply because women are not equal in the considerations. And I think that if we really want to get where we want to, then it is high time that um, the disproportionately skewed uh, emphasis on men is changed so that women play the proper role. Now, this can take different forms in terms of how they use their incomes, because we all know it goes more towards keeping the home, the family, educating the kids, as against how men sometimes tend to allocate their, their, the monies they earn from, from the activity. But how has Ghana sought to handle this uh, problem? There's a question of, obviously, inequality. In Ghana, out of the 10,949 members of the Ghana Chamber of Mines, in 2014, only 659 were women. Now, 24 out of the estimated total of 600 concession holders um, were women. That's just 4%. And then 7 out of 551 licensed gold buyers are women. So again, downstream, you see there's still uh, discrimination. Um, in the area, when it comes to the labor, the actual labor, uh, particularly in the, we have the small-scale artisanal kind of mining. You have more women in the hard labor involved in, in mining the gold. And we know that they are affected by health conditions because these are not uh, properly run mines, um, where they have children, breastfeeding the children, where they are mining the gold, they are affected by the harmful chemicals of mercury, cyanide, and sometimes in other mining areas uh, like quarries, the dust. Um, they get all kinds of diseases from you know, lung diseases and so on. So the government is trying to tackle this, first through education, 
uh, ensuring that STEM education is uh, nationwide. Girls get access to science and maths education to uh, inspire their interest in the mining sector formally. And then also in health-related issues because we do have national health coverage. But this, uh, the quality of the health care, particularly in the mining areas, is not what we would desire. And therefore, there's a need to pay specific attention to those parts and also ensure that the correct kind of uh, mining practices take place to avoid the contact that they come into uh, with the chemicals. There is also the regulatory framework. And in this case, the government is working closely with the Ghana Chamber of Mines, the private sector mines like Newmont, Anglo Gold, Ashanti. They are all working with government to see how to enhance uh, access to some of the concessions, increase their um, capabilities, capacities to be able to compete effectively with their male counterparts in getting access to the, to the activity of mining. And so these are just some of the areas. Of course, there's much more that needs to be done. And um, it is, I think, uh, an effort that needs to build. We, we need to build the partnerships to be able to to get the partnership between the private sector, the government, civil society, and the women themselves. And I'm glad to say that we do have a women in mining uh, kind of network in Ghana. It's linked to others in South Africa and elsewhere to try to help bring up the issues. We need to talk more about the problem, and I'm glad that we're doing this. This needs to go out more, see how we can support those networks to be able to deal effectively uh, with the issues on the ground and bring up the women to benefit from mining, to participate more effectively in it, and also I think through that we can safeguard the environment better, we can safeguard, we can transform the communities in which the mining takes place. Thank you very much, and I look forward to the question time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador.